Hi, Central Family. Thanks for joining us again in our fourth week of following the Messiah. We pick up our storyline in a very important occasion. Jesus asked this question to the disciples. Who do you say I am? This question is one of supreme importance. The answer to that question will demonstrate whether you truly know him or not. Peter responds, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. In one of the Gospels, Jesus says to him, This has been revealed to you by my Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, we cannot forget who Jesus is. Who is it that we are worshiping? Who is it that we are talking about? Interesting enough, just after this amazing confession by Peter, in the following verses, just as Jesus starts sharing the plan of what's going to happen, that he's going to suffer and be killed, And after three days rise again, Peter, the same one that just had made this amazing declaration, takes Jesus aside and starts to rebuke him. And Jesus looks at him and says these unexpected words, Get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. See here in the rest of this portion, Jesus is pointing out that we ought to surrender our life, our fleshly desires, to instead follow Him and surrender to His plans. Whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. The Bible goes on to tell us about a unique time in Jesus' life and ministry, where for just a few moments, and to only three other people, there is a glimpse of the glory of the Messiah, the transfiguration. His clothes were shining before them, and Peter offers to put up shelters. But the Bible actually tells us what's going on. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Imagine how frightened you will be to see a small glimpse of the eternal glory before your eyes. This is Jesus, the Messiah. We then encounter a boy who is demon-possessed, and though the father had asked the disciples to drive the demons out, they could not. Jesus said to the boy's father, who had asked him if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, Everything is possible for him who believes. The boy's father exclaimed one of the most amazing prayers we find in this gospel. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. May that prayer resonate with us. May God be gracious to us and help us overcome our unbelief in the victorious power of Jesus. Jesus then drove out the demons. Jesus goes on to teach a number of things. Firstly, the formula of greatness. If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He then goes on to say, whoever is not against us is for us. He warns us of the danger of being comfortable with sin in our lives and the danger of hell where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Some Pharisees wanted to trap him regarding marriage and divorce, and Jesus explains to them what was the intention of God when he created the marriage institution. And he says to them, Therefore, what God has joined together, let men not separate. He also said, Let the children come to me, for to them the kingdom of God belongs. There is a need for us to have a childlike faith that is completely dependent on God and not on ourselves. The next encounter that Jesus has illustrates what we just mentioned that we constantly rely on ourselves and our works rather than Him. A young rich man asks Jesus, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Can you hear already in his question there is a problem? What must I do? We always go to our own efforts. After the young man goes away because he couldn't sell his possessions, Jesus addressed the core of the issue with his disciples, where they asked him, Who then can be saved? And Jesus responds, With man this is impossible, but not with God. See, that's the message. There is nothing man can do to inherit eternal life. It is about what God has done through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, paying for our sins. He then encounters a blind man, Bartimaeus, who started to cry out to Jesus, saying, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Though many rebuked him, he shouted all the more, And when Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, I want to see. Jesus said, Go, your faith has healed you. 
immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Just as Jesus opened the eyes of Bartimaeus, only he can open our eyes, give us sight to who he is. Thank you for joining us in this week of following the Messiah.